Science. I'm joined by Dr. Madhu Pai, Professor and Canada Research Chair of Epidemiology and Global Health at McGill University. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. And I know that you, along with many of your counterparts there abroad, have been very, very disturbed by this crisis that you're seeing in the country. Uh, many of you are doing your bit. You're advocating for more help for India. So tell us a bit about what you have been doing. Yeah, I mean, all of us have somebody or the other impacted by this, uh, Gargi. So I'm dealing with my own family members and friends who are sick and struggling to get any kind of medical care during this crisis. And, you know, obviously there are thousands and thousands of Indians outside India who are desperately keen to help. I, I, I get uh, messages every single second. How can I help? How can I help? We have money, we have talent, we have expertise, there are tech companies, there are doctors. We are desperately keen to help. So we've started, informally started a group called India COVID SOS. Um, the website is alive. And we have now more than 300 people of Indian origin from around the world trying to help. Um, one of the first things that we wanted to do as a group was to make simple tip sheets to, to help people in India to deal with COVID at home. And we did it for our own family members, trust me. It wasn't something we had thought of. We have had to, in an emergency, come up with some plan. Like if you had COVID at home and you just cannot get hospital, cannot get medical care, what can you do? So the tip sheets we've now translated into Marathi, Gujarati, Punjabi, Tamil, Kannada, Telugu, Malayalam. It's all available on the website, can be downloaded. We've gone through five versions of the tip sheet and we've improved it based on feedback. And, and in addition to such advice, some of us are working on figuring out how to send oxygen to India or concentrators. Some of us are actively fundraising. I'm, I'm, I'm contributing almost on a daily basis to inspire others to do that. And we are also uh, trying to do media here within North America, for example. Like there was a lot of advocacy to get Biden and Harris administration to finally send supplies and release materials to India, right? We're doing, I'm doing something similar in Canada. I want the Canadian government to do more. Canada has received the COVID, COVID shield vaccines and it's time that Canada helped India in this crisis. Right, uh, Dr. Pai, so, you know, we, we've been showing that tip sheet uh, that you've shared online, you know, on our screens. If you could just take us through that, because there's a lot of panic. You can imagine, you know, the kind of scenes we're uh, seeing outside hospitals. Uh, the minute somebody tests positive for COVID or even has symptoms, there's a lot of uh, panic in households as well. So tell us about what you've said in this tip sheet about how to manage, uh, you know, COVID at home and also when to escalate it and reach out for help from, uh, you know, the doctors. Correct. And we're happy that the tip sheet has even been um, tweeted by the government of India and it's being taken up quite a bit. So basically, uh, if somebody has typical COVID symptoms, which we know what they are, right? Uh, fever, sore throat, cough, so on and so forth, shortness of breath. Uh, right now, it's challenging to get a COVID test. As you know, the backlog is incredible. So even my own friends and family have struggled to even get a test. So if you are in a high COVID area, you might as well take it that you have COVID right? That is the only way to deal with this crisis. Just clinically say you have COVID. First thing is you isolate yourself. Don't go out and spread the infection to others. Open the windows, ventilate the house, wear a mask so that you can protect others in your family. But it's, I must say, it's very hard within Indian households to prevent the infection from, in, that's why whole families are coming down right now, right? Because the virus is so transmissible, the newer variants. But do the best you can to not infect others within your house. Definitely no going out to gatherings parties, all of that is finished. Definitely, please stay at home. And then you have to hydrate yourself. Fever is a very common uh, symptom. So a lot of fluids, a lot of fluids, hydration, paracetamol, basic things. And then get a pulse oximeter. The pulse oximeter is what tells us what the oxygen saturation in the blood is. In other words, are the lungs able to get enough oxygen or is a lung congested so that the oxygen is not getting into blood? Pulse oximeters are available in pharmacies, Amazon, online portals. It's about 1,000 rupees or so. I understand that it's, it's not easy for a lot of people to afford it. But if you can get it and monitor your saturation, if the oxygen saturation is 92 or above, there's no need to panic at all. You probably don't need to go to a hospital. You can manage this very well with symptomatic uh, treatment. And then a simple uh, budesonide steroid inhaler or a dry powder inhaler might help. It's more a preventive actually at this stage. And then of course, sleeping on your tummy, what we call proning might help because oxygenation is better. But after a few days, some people will have an oxygen falling below 92. 
that is when we start getting worried. Um, if at that point you can get a telemedicine consult with your doctor or go to a hospital acknowledging the crisis right now, it may not be possible. But once you reach that stage, that's when you start to seek care and try and get into a hospital. Once you get medical care, there is only a few interventions that are known to work with COVID. Obviously, uh, proning helps oxygen. That is when home oxygen, not home oxygen, oxygen therapy is really required. You need enough oxygen to keep your saturation above. 92 right the lowest level of oxygen to keep it above 92 and the in terms of medicine the only medicine that has genuinely been shown by international clinical trials and accepted by who is steroids steroids are the bankable therapy dexamethasone is what is recommended orally for five to ten days but there are alternative steroids that can be used if dexamethasone is not available so dexamethasone and oxygen pretty much is the mainstay of therapy now remdesivir and tocilizumab as you know has made the news a lot for for reasons i cannot understand that is only used in really severely sick patients whose oxygen levels are really low and it is not for everyone it should not be used at home there is no need to panic if you can't get remdesivir and remdesivir might shorten the duration of hospital illness, but it has not even been shown to reduce deaths. So it is a marginally effective drug. It is not a magic drug. There is no need to panic. Convalescent plasma doesn't really work. So we've listed in our tip sheet a whole bunch of medicines for which there is no solid evidence to back them and WHO has not endorsed them. No international guideline recognizes them. So we didn't want people to waste time, effort and money taking medicines that were irrational or completely not necessary. So that's basically what the tip sheet says. And so at a certain point, you will need to seek medical care, but we hope that until then you can manage the illness quite well using uh, tip sheets or tele teleconsults with the doctors. Already, yes, you've spoken about these medicines like, uh, you know, remdesivir, etc. But I have to say over here, it's quite a panic to get them, to access them, plasma therapy as well. Uh, steroids, as you've said, that is something that is being included by many doctors. Doctor, you spoke about how you have family and friends here in India. You've been in touch with them. Uh, what are the challenges you've seen that they're facing? Every one of them is struggling. Every one of them is struggling. We're hearing somebody is sick, not getting uh, tested, not even able to get to the hospital, zero beds, difficulty in getting oxygen is a nightmare. Right now, I have a friend struggling and I'm managing him on WhatsApp. I'm looking at his oxygen saturation. It is starting to dip. I can't even get him dexamethasone. The poor guy is all alone. I'm desperately tweeting, finding some way to get him. I, I don't want him to you know, collapse into 80 saturation tomorrow, right? I, I'm, I, this is the problem. He's terrified of going somewhere and, the, and no hospital is willing to take him because he hasn't had a COVID test done. It's like if you can't get a test done, the hospital won't take you. But right now, probably one in 10 people are getting tested because the testing capacity is overwhelmed by the number of people. So we need to switch to easier rapid tests. We, we should not be insisting on this RT-PCR because India's RT-PCR capacity has well been overwhelmed. Right? Lacks of people need testing. There aren't enough laboratories in India to pull off RT-PCR. Even those who are getting tests are getting report in four days. That is not acceptable in this crisis. You can deteriorate a lot in four days. What happens if your saturation drops to 80 in three days and you don't even have a COVID test? Now a hospital may not accept you, right? It's, a, it's, it's catastrophic. We need to come up with simple uh, rapid tests, even home-based testing solutions to get people and a syndromic diagnosis. In other words, if you're in a hotspot, if you have these, these, these classic symptoms, take it as COVID, right? We, we, are, we have to have such pragmatic ways of managing. My friend said he cannot smell or taste. To me, that's a done deal. The minute he said that, you know what? You have COVID, I don't even need a test, but then I don't need a test to manage him, but the hospital might still ask for it, right? Will they accept his symptoms and say he has COVID? So this is the problem. I've been pushing him to get a test. He said, I cannot get a test. I can't get him steroid. This is becoming really desperate. And, and the, it's just hitting all of us personally now, you know. Right, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Pai, thank you so much for speaking to us.